Hi everyone, uh, thanks uh, for having me today to talk about Cram Search. Um, sorry I can't be there in person, unfortunately Covid uh, caged me at home. However, uh, for the next 10-15 minutes I'll uh, be talking to you about uh, Cram Search itself, which is something I'm sure you're already familiar with given all the stalking I do every month on our WhatsApp group uh, and the emails that Rena George kindly sends on my behalf on a monthly basis. So first of all, when I was asked to give this talk, the little toddler inside of me got really excited and I thought, well, I should definitely talk about HTML coding and the beauty of syntax highlighting and its colors. Um, I could talk about how powerful the Cramsol G learning platform is, which we run on our server, or even the pleasure of checking how many people actually go on cramsearch.org and check out our website or even when they're from. Um, or I could just spend about 10-15 minutes talking about the uber important concept of bounce rate in website development. Uh, but then I thought, well, probably most of you are not going to give much of a penny about all this. So what we'll do for the next 10-15 minutes is uh, talking about why Cramsearch started, uh, why it's designed the way it is, um, what we achieved so far, um, and a few points uh, or things that you should kind of remember if you want to try and start something similar to Cram Search. So, let's start from the why. Uh, well, it was um, the first few months of 2020. Um, coronavirus was starting to go around. We didn't know too much about coronavirus itself, but we did know based on the news that we were not going to operate much for the foreseeable future. Um, at the time, I was working in endocrine surgery in Sheffield with Professor Sabah, the gentleman you can see down there at the bottom left of the screen. And one morning um, he shows up in theatres and, and tells me, Gio, we should start a journal club. And obviously with me being his only trainee at the time, um, the decision chart that should be um, sort of in the mind of every surgical trainee every time we get offered a new project popped into my mind. Um, I didn't have much time at the time. Uh, my wife was pregnant with our um, second child and I had quite a few projects going on. Uh, but I very quickly came to realize uh, two things about Prof Saba. One, um, he's very smart and two, uh, he's very enthusiastic and his enthusiasm is quite contagious as you, as you can guess. Um, so we started talking about content, so how should we do this? And the idea was very simple, let's uh, get together, uh, let's gather all core surgical trainees and hire general surgical trainees in uh, um, Sheffield Teachings uh, and uh, critique a paper, talk about the methods uh, of the paper and then Prof Saba would deliver uh, a presentation on a methodology topic and he showed me a list of topics that he was available to cover. And it all sounded quite nice and, and interesting. However, um, when I got home I started thinking and I realized, based on my previous experiences and short experiences um, you've had as well, um, that yes, having content and having enthusiasm is great, but as this vignette very well highlights, uh, it's very hard to pin people down um, and uh, to get them to stick to a schedule because we're all very busy, because you know, um, we're all rotational trainees, we all uh, pass by a trust and then move on to something else. So yes, uh, content is king, it's all well and dandy to, to have content there, but my main focus here was really, well, yes, we got all this stuff ready to be presented and talked about, we need to get it out there, we need to make it available for people to look at in their own time and whenever they want. So we do need a website, uh, which started as cramsers.org and it is still cramsers.org. Um, we need to record all these sessions, uh, we need to put them on YouTube, we need to uh, make them into a format that can be listened to uh, and make them available on iTunes, Spotify and Google Podcasts so people can uh, can use them, can, can listen to them whenever they want, wherever they want, whether it be driving, whether it be cycling or in their bathtub or whatever. Um, and we started with a website not the best one, I have to say, uh, but it did the job at the time. Um, we didn't exactly know what our strong selling points were going to be and how the project was going to sort of play out. So, yes, things were all there. You know, it did the job at the time. 
pretty quickly in the space of about six months we realized that we needed something slightly different so we redesigned the whole lot uh, um, with a website that now um, you are uh, I hope all familiar with um, much easier to navigate um, you can see straight away um, what uh, what it is about what papers we discuss um, what um, our main uh, sort of content um, is and obviously um, because as this vignette very well highlights um, doing a journal club can be a little bit boring we try and keep things as informal as possible um, yes we meet online it's a bit of an awkward time uh, 8 p.m. but you can attend in your pyjama if you want videos are always off uh, you can even have a drink uh, as you listen some people even bath their kids as they're listening with an airport um, and because obviously nowadays if it's not visible on your smartphone it's not really particularly cool um, our website can be easily browsed from any uh, smartphone and all our content is available via the YouTube app and the um, Spotify um, app. So let's move on to what uh, we have achieved. Um, we'll break this down into uh, sort of little paragraphs. So let's start with our live sessions. So we've had 27 in total so far. Um, 22 lectures were delivered by Professor Saba. Uh, and one lecture was delivered by Professor Danny Rosen uh, from uh, Tel Aviv. It was a very successful session, uh, which uh, you can um, find on our YouTube channel. Um, every time we have a live session, um, we ask uh, uh, attendees to provide a little bit of feedback. And so far, our feedback has been pretty good. Uh, we have about 4.9 stars out of 5, um, if you want to see it that way, uh, for a total of 71 ratings uh, provided. On average, we have about 12 people uh, per session. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less. And the average length of our episodes, so the whole edited paper presentation and teaching session is about 50 minutes. Now, let's see how all this stuff has actually fared online. Um, we have about 120, 130 um, single users on our website per month, uh, which I guess is not that bad uh, for a website that's about you know reviewing papers and math and stats. Um, this spans across 22 months of activity, so we started back in May uh, 2020. Our bounce rate is 77%. Now, what's bounce rate? We'll get back to that in a second. Let's see how our content has been doing on YouTube. Um, on YouTube, we've got about 50 videos uh, uploaded at the moment. Uh, in total, we recorded 1,864 views, um, which on average makes about 40 per video. Now, let's have a look at how this number has been doing um, across time. Um, very briefly, on top, you can see visits um, on our website. At the beginning, obviously, there was a lot of enthusiasm. We had up to 400 visitors per month. And, you know, we moved on to build a reasonably solid fan base, if you want to call it like that, uh, with about 100 visits per month, as I mentioned. Bounce rate uh, is the second chart you can see uh, on this slide. Bounce rate actually is... Um, the percentage of people that uh, pop up on our website uh, and then uh, um, do one thing, like viewing our homepage, and then instead of carrying on, just uh, look at their Facebook page or whatever. Um, and as you can see, it's about 75%. Um, is that good? Well, for an average website, probably not very much, but considering the way our website is designed, it's actually not that bad because pretty much the whole of our content um, can be and is normally viewed on a platform that's not our website. Uh, you get on crumbsource.org, find the video you want, you watch it on YouTube. Um, you uh, go on our website, find the audio you want to listen to, and you listen to it on Spotify or wherever. And the bottom chart, finally, is the number of views we've had uh, per week uh, throughout the existence of our YouTube channel. Um, as you can see, we've not fared too badly. Um, Sometimes we have peaks of over 80 views a week, um, sometimes it's even zero, but overall, you know, we keep a steady total number of viewers, which I guess, um, it, again, is not that bad for uh, people that talk about papers and, uh, and stats. Um, let's have a look at social media. Um, on social media, our most successful platform is actually uh, Instagram, uh, where we have about 480 followers. And again, talking about papers and talking about stats, so I guess that's not too bad. Let's move on to academic achievements, if you like. Now, um, every time um, 
a court trainee or, 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 or anybody really presents a paper, uh, we encourage them to write up a letter to the editor that gets sent to the journal where the paper was originally published. Um, and so far we had 16 published in uh, um, journals of the caliber of British General Surgery, Annals, JAMA Surgery and uh, uh, WJS. Um, we talked about our journal club experience uh, twice at uh, the SCS International Conference uh, and uh, uh, our initiative has been featured in the Royal College of Surgeons um, blog. As I hinted at at the beginning, um, we do have an e-learning platform installed alongside um, our uh, crumbsearch.org website that's based on Moodle, which is an open source and freely available learning management system. And the reason why that e-learning platform was born was actually just to make my life a little bit easier. Because I realized that every month um, I was going through the same uh, process, uh, just with a different trainee. Um, so um, instead of repeating myself over and over again, uh, I condensed everything that the trainee needs to know uh, in a very simple Crumb Search Presenter course that they can self-enroll in. Uh, they can find the instructions on how to prepare the presentation and make it up to standard for the journal club. Uh, they've got some MCQs that are titrated to the type of paper that they've chosen and they do them before and after the presentation. Uh, and there's also instructions on how to write up a letter to the editor. So that saved me a huge amount of time. And uh, as we were going along, we started running some online courses, and particularly we uh, did recently run a critical appraisal course in collaboration with ASSET. Um, we do use the e-learning platform itself to provide pre-course material, uh, which is again freely available uh, for people that um, um, subscribe to the course. It's a small fee for the course itself. Let's talk about things that, you know, didn't go as well. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we have 12 attendees on average per session. Well, if we consider that we invite um, every co-surgical trainee and every higher general surgery trainee in the region, the denominator of that 12 is actually quite big. Uh, so perhaps we could do a little bit better there, but again, all our content is available online, um, so people uh, perhaps um, tend to look at that uh, in their own time and yes Instagram has been doing not too badly uh, but Twitter and Facebook have been doing pretty poorly um, and uh, you know I guess that's probably not that important right with everything in life um, obviously um, an initiative like this cannot be sustained by just one or two people so there is a team behind Crumb Search and similarly to very successful um, teams from cinematic universities, politics and sport, and I'm sure I'm going to regret this uh, when Italy doesn't qualify for the World Cup uh, in a, a few days' time. Um, you know, we do have a team. Uh, the core members of the team are obviously Prof Saba, myself and Maria Digby. I'm sure some of you know her. She's a core surgical trainee in Yorkshire as well. Um, we uh, are also the main trustees of the Crumb Search Charity. We established ourselves as a charity in order to handle uh, the income that we get from uh, the methodology course that we run. Uh, Prof is president, I'm secretary, and Maria is treasurer. Uh, we do have a few more collaborators. Uh, Prasant, you can see there in the middle, um, started with us back in 2020 together with Alice. Uh, Prasant is now a foundation doctor, and Alice uh, is about to finish her medical school. Um, and uh, moving on to the right, we've got Maddy. She's our third year medical student. You can see from her profile picture uh, that she's still got unbroken dreams and a lot of hopes. Uh, and she's helping us with all social media management and video and audio editing. Um, and on the far right, uh, Sadia, Becky and Oslem, uh, they handle communication uh, with course surgical trainees in the region. Uh, there's obviously a few people that have been involved with Crumb Search in the past, and you can find details about our collaborators on crumbsearch.org slash bio. Now, um, a few things um, I kind of just want you to be aware in case you want to start um, doing something similar to Crumb Search. Uh, first of all, wherever you've got some content and you want to put it out there on the web, you have to remember that copyright is a very important uh, thing to take into account. Um, everything that we make and publish is available um, under this Creative common license which basically makes it so whoever wants to take our material and use it again must say that it comes from Crumb Surge. Uh, they can't make any money out of it and they have to share whatever content they make out of um, our own product uh, with the same identical license. Um, 
this becomes very important if you use um, things like YouTube, iTunes or Spotify or Google Podcasts because uh, whenever you publish your content up there there'll be some standard licenses that will apply to what you have made um, and you know unless you've stated otherwise beforehand like we did. A second very important thing that you should bear in mind is GDPR or General Data Protection Regulation. Um, a piece of legislation that comes from uh, the European Union and is still very much valid in UK law uh, and it does have a lot of consequences with uh, collecting data about visitors that um, just randomly pop up on your website uh, and handling things like email addresses and contacts um, whenever you handle a mailing list or an e-learning platform like we do. And uh, if you're planning to run something like this, uh, you need an adequate um, service and privacy policy, which is, you know, uh, quite lengthy. Um, and uh, you do need to know a few technical bits and bobs to write one up. Right. So to wrap things up, uh, what is Crown Search? Well, um, if you go back to um, Sir William Osler, um, definition of it, yes, it is a journal club. Um, you'd argue a critical appraisal club. Uh, for me, as you can probably guess and have guessed throughout this presentation, is a little bit of a playground uh, where I get to play with things like coding and uh, insta installing um, things on our server like Moodle, etc. etc. Uh, but for the folks that um, come on board with us and do present a paper, uh, like the guys that you can see here on the top right, um, I'd like to think that it is a little bit of a journey uh, that starts from choosing a paper preparing your presentation, um, doing your MCQs, trying the presentation, do your live session, discuss uh, your critique of the paper, redo your MCQs and finally writing a letter to the editor. And I'd like to think that this journey culminates in some learning that's applicable not just to the paper that these guys have discussed and looked at with us, but also to other papers that they might come across in the future. And hopefully uh, for most of them at least, the sensation of being a published author, or often for the first time. Right, uh, that wraps it up for me. Um, thanks again for listening to um, my presentation, and thanks for having me, and again, so sorry I'm not able to be there in person. Thank you.